This is our Understanding the Scriptures segment. We're in the book of Acts. We're in Acts chapter 16, and we're going to start right out with verse 1. Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, that would be Timothy, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. Well, <laughs> Tom, this has been much discussed. You know, was Paul wrong? Mm -hmm. He has Timothy circumcised, and uh, so he doesn't offend the Jews. Well, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, to the Jew I became as a Jew, to the Greek I became as a Greek. Uh, to, you know, uh, he's not compromising the gospel. Timothy is already saved, so he's not saying you're not, Timothy, you're not saved unless you get circumcised. But it's so as not to give an offense uh, to uh, some of these uh, Jews. After all, Timothy was Jewish, at least half Jewish. Right. Well, he was really fully Jewish because it goes by the mother. So his I'm mother sorry? his mother was a Jewess, and his father was a Greek. So I don't have any problem with Paul. He makes it very, very clear uh, that if you're circumcised, this is Galatians chapter 5, if you're circumcised, in other words, to be saved for your salvation or for a, your standing before God, then Christ profits you nothing, he says. If you're looking to something other than Jesus Christ. So Paul is certainly not doing that. He's only doing it so that there won't be some offense. They'll say, hey, you got this uncircumcised guy. This would be unsaved Jews. I don't mm -hmm. believe Paul would do that for the Christian Jews. No, it was, uh, again, it was his witness to them that was <clears throat> having accessibility to these Jews. And that's what right. it helped. Verse 4. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. They've just as a synopsis for, uh, or to back up a little for those who have maybe have not uh, listened to the program before, Paul, who was at Antioch, <clears throat> where Gentiles were being saved, mm -hmm. then came... Judaizers, those Jewish legalists, to Antioch and told the Gentiles that they must be circumcised in order to truly be saved. These Judaizers were Christians, right? but they were mistaken about that. Right. They got saved through faith in Christ, but they were Jews, and they thought, oh, I guess salvation is only for Jews. Well, then you've got to be circumcised and so forth. So Paul is not doing it for that reason. No. But my point here is, is that... Uh, there was a letter then mm -hmm. sent from those in Jerusalem to the Gentiles right. saying, right. look, you don't need to be circumcised. You don't need to come under the law of Moses. Right. And there were a few things that they recommended that they do. But Paul is right. giving out this decree. Mm -hmm. So obviously the issue with he's not contradicting himself with Timothy. That's my point. So, Tom, as, as you're pointing out, verse 4, he is bringing these... these um, decrees, or this letter, actually. He continues to read this letter, mm -hmm. not only to the, uh, the Gentile believers in Antioch, but everywhere he went. This is Gentile country now. I, I find verse 5 really wonderful. So were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Wow, people are getting saved every day. Uh, and we often wonder, well, how, why don't we see that uh, happening today. Well, um, part of the problem is, Tom, we don't want to get off on that. Seeker-friendly churches, we only want to tell the sinner, not that he's a sinner. Robert Schuller says that would be an insult. That would drive him away. 
you want to build up their self-esteem. The gospel isn't even preached in many uh, churches, in most churches, Tom. Many pastors don't even believe it today. Uh, and there's great confusion mm -hmm. everywhere. So, but God and, is saving many souls. And Dave, the point that you're making, uh, you know, I love this verse as well. It's so uh, set forth here. And so were the churches established in the faith. Right. In other words, they were not set up as a magnet to draw the lost. They brought people in who were saved, discipled them, established mm -hmm. them in the faith. Then they went out to bring the gospel to others. Now, we have that reversed today, especially in the whole church growth, seeker-friendly right. mentality. Right, and you would relate this then to Jude, verse 3. I found it necessary to write unto you to earnestly contend for the faith, once for all delivered to the saints. Mm -hmm. For certain men have crept in unawares, you know. Okay, so what is this faith that they're established in? It's the once for all delivered faith that we are to earnestly contend for. They were established in it. And there would be those, well, Paul writes, or sorry, Paul says to the elders at Ephesus, where he calls them from Miletum, he's on his way to Rome, and he says, after my departing, <clears throat> grievous wolves will enter in, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So remember, he says, uh, how for three, the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one of you night and day with tears. So Paul is saying, look out. There are going to be those who will corrupt the word of God, even from among yourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, men will arise. And Tom, uh, Paul makes it very clear why they do this. It says, to draw away disciples after them. Just like I quoted Benny Hinn earlier in the program. You don't come to this church just to hear what you get everywhere else. No, there's not three of them. There's nine of them. What's he doing? He is introducing corrupt teachings, perverse teachings, in order to draw away disciples after him. And everywhere you find a cult, uh, the a corruption of the word of God by some prophet, some leader, whatever it is. Some commissioned apostle. Right, or those who commission them. Mm -hmm. uh, why are they doing this? Because they want to be different from everybody else. They want to show you that they have uh, a monopoly on the truth, that they're on the inside track with God. Follow me. Uh, we've really got it. And, of course, that's how, I guess, denominations began, wasn't it? And then the quarrel, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Every one of you says, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, you know. Uh, no, they weren't crucified for you. Let's get back uh, to following the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then Paul says, as I think you quoted last week, follow me even as I follow Christ. Dave, you bring up an interesting point here. Uh, you know, as a former Catholic and somebody who loves Roman Catholics and certainly tries to witness to them and uh, but one objection they have to me leaving the Catholic Church is they say, well, look, you, you were in the one true church. Now you've gone off to this uh, evangelical Christianity. Look, at you've got thousands and thousands of denominations. You've got all kinds of things. Whereas mm -hmm. we are one church, we're following mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the truth. Uh, we're not diversified like you are. Or, or, so... What you just said earlier with all of these different individuals drawing people after themselves, that's what they lodge against you uh -huh. Uh -huh. or me as an evangelical Christian. But, Tom, you could say it better than I can. The Catholic Church is divided into how many, oh, how many divisions? Unbelievable. Right. For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 